All right, new version here with lights and everything this looks awesome. Let's play this first through here. Hey guys, I was just, uh, I was just, this never leaves this room. Cool. All right. Let me just bring down the volume a tad. And you're mentioning that as we see here, you added the lights, all the storytelling points here. This is cool. Big fan of this. I like how they, they just have their look. It doesn't have to be too much. We're focusing on this character here. Now, since you do have the lights, there are a couple of things I do want to mention if you can tweak those a bit. You might want to just change the pole color or give it another a light for the rim, like on him. It gets kind of hidden. There's a lot of, I might just be my monitor as well. I'm going to go and change everything here, but it seems just very, it seems very dark through there. Just for visibility, you want to be careful. Same thing with the hair, but I mean, you do have a rim light, but just watch out for stuff like that. I mean, it's mostly this just gets, just disappears up until here. You know, even if you had something like that, where it was just a bit lighter. So even through here, you have that a somewhat of a lighter background so that we can, like this is nicely uh, separated. Then once you get to here, watch out again, we have the shadow of this conflicting a bit with that shoulder area. Uh, it gets a bit better through here. Obviously this is better, especially with the rim. Um, but then you have some moments that I just wonder if we can push out a bit more. You can just change the lighting a little bit, but there's some moments through here that I wish were, were just a bit different. Same thing with his leg. It gets everything is very dark. Uh, even if you give him just like blue jeans or something, I would just be careful with that. Hey, and then when you get to here, um, I'm slightly distracted by the, the eye light or the kicker or whatever you want to call it. But uh, if there's any way to just I would take these two out and just have it right there. Come on, more, a bit more classical. There's just, there's a lot of stuff going on in his eyes where it's, it's slightly distracting. Other than that, I think the way you arrange things for, uh, again, your separation between the foreground and background is good. And we can see everything. I just feel like this is almost, you almost need like a separate, uh, a cheat for where that section is lit a bit more. I want to see those eyes a bit more. It's almost a bit too much in the shadow here. And again, the, the eye light or the kicker is a bit a bit much. Like, whereas this, if you look at the difference between this, how much you can see the eyes with a little bit of an eye light there compared to here, where this just really falls into darkness there, that's a bit of a difference. If there's anything you can do to make it more look like this, you might just have to cheat the lighting a little bit. Even if you just parent a light to the face so that it's always somewhat illuminated with a fall off. Something like that. Let's go back here. Now your arcs are definitely better. You were talking about that in your notes here and uh, yeah, some flashiness to the face. I think it's overall much, much better. It's definitely cool. Um, and especially the way you have your trail in the hands and the fingers. The arcs are definitely clean. There are some moments where I feel like this comes down a bit straight and then you have this sudden off there i would kind of smooth that out a bit and i can already sense your eye roll on the other end they're like really how picky can he be because other than that it looks it looks nice just watch out for some little moments here and there like here if you look at your spacing here and i'm gonna bring this in here where you have your finger then bam and it's only this happens so this seems a bit off you can see that so every now and then you got some moments in there but it's not too bad I think I will be careful in moments through here when I'm turning this off. When you have a rotation really just out of the elbow and there's really not much going on in the forearm and this kind of gives it that mechanical feel of just that top part is rotating. And I would always somewhat have a little bit of a of an upper arm movement in there so it doesn't feel so um, separated. And then speaking of arc, I know you must hate me by now, but I got to bring that up again. If you go down, just watch out how your your wrist just has a fairly sharp turn, but then it's also accentuated by that elbow. Bam, just kind of 
coming up here. I think we could smooth that out a little bit more. It's not it's not a shock killer. We are getting fast here, but it's it's just a tiny thing. I'm more even with this with this moment through there. I would really look at um, that section that I outlined there where it gets a bit poppy through there. I think if you want to do anything, it would be this. And the other thing, and this is tricky because it's it's a, it's a destructive note, but if you look at the rhythm of your hand, kind of works through here. But here it just feels a bit random how that move goes over here, pops and then goes back to the left and back to the right up. And I feel like it could be slightly more in rhythm and in sync with the voice. Mainly because this feels nice here. Because that works with the sync. Now, the argument can be that, well, he is not really a good singer, and this just adds to the clumsiness of it. Um, so I'm totally open to that argument there. You might want to tone this down a bit, that light there. But again, it's on the shock killer. Now, in terms of more details, as you can see, there's, there's a change in the angle between the forearm and the wrist. And as you go through, there's a lot of movement in his upper body and his arm and his elbow. But if I look at the hand, there's really no tightening of the grip. There's no follow on that on that palm and the wrist as the forearm changes. So this is still some detail you got to do here. I appreciate this, that you have something in the fingers. But then it feels like just a slide down. You may want to make sure that you have a bit of a rotation, maybe pivoting off of here on that wrist, just for your final details. Because the thing is, now that you've added, you know, the extra awesomeness of the lighting you want to make sure that the animation really lives up to that as well because you don't want to you don't want the feeling of well someone spent so much time with the lights and the textures and everything that makes it look cool but then there's still moments in animation where like that pop here or this feeling more like an ik arm um you know you want, you want to make sure that all that detail is there same thing on this you might want to relax those fingers maybe two three frames earlier before that hand goes out And then watch out like your finger pose. That's eh, pretty fast. It's kind of looking at how long we're staying in this. But they do straighten. They just feel then they come a bit too even there and how straight they are. I mean, it turns into kind of karate chop hands, especially through here where that elbow really pops out. Like that feels already a bit more purposeful, which is cool. This definitely works really well here. And I'm being super picky again because we're it's pretty much done and I want to just give you the extra picky notes and the lighting's there and everything, so I don't want to skip things. Turn that sound off just a bit. As I'm scrubbing, looking at feet. There's a nice little slide there. But I feel like there's already a slide. It might just be because of the lighting, but it feels like this is already translating towards us and not really pivoting off of this section. It might just be an illusion because of the lighting, if you could double check. And it's a bummer. I would almost, I would love for this hole to be here. So there's a clear silhouette on that foot here. So afterwards it's okay because we have this and that's totally fine. What's he doing here? Then he brings it up. Brings it back down here. We can see the shadow move. And then it's not a big deal there. I don't know. Maybe there's something you can do. Maybe you want to cheat. Just at that moment, you can bring that arm down. Maybe shorten that whole pole a bit. Just the thought to give this such a really nice silhouette. There's something too. As he goes down, I'm still reacting. Sorry to that hand feeling so almost soft. It's like he has, there's a lot of tension. Like he has a lot of movement going on. He's getting, getting ready to go. Rah! And it feels like during that time, you want just m m tenser fingers. Like he's getting ready. He's getting ready for that, for that. Rah! And then having those default hands kind of, there's energy going on, but then it's contradicted by this default hand. So we'll just watch out for that. There's a bit of a wiggle pop in the knee as that knee boop, 
pops over to the left and then it's stuck and then it pops forward again watch that in real time there's a bit of a jitter there that's cool there you might even want to have a little bit of a boom as this goes up a little bit of a foot roll just a tad coming up coming up coming up coming up and then you can come back down because you do have the root come down just a little uh, tiny thing again it's not the shock killer but because you have some nice detail and every now and then the details a bit lost in other parts careful it feels like you're Root or head. There's something that stops a bit too abruptly. And boop, right there. Boop. It's a bit harsh. I would really ease into this and hold, 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 hold. And then come down here. And I wonder, let's see the voice go back to the voice. <laughs> I think as he opens here, because the thing is, it's basically he does the nah, it must sense through the eyelids that there's more light, and that's why he opens up the eyes and then looks over, realizing they're over there. But I would cheat those eyes a bit so that the pupils are a bit closer to camera. Can't really draw here, you know what I mean? Like, I'm... I'm not really seeing the black. It's probably also maybe overlit, but maybe just cheat and put a little black spot there for a pupil. So you want to see the eyes. It feels a bit zombie-like. And maybe it helps to not have that hair rotation, to keep that rotation here instead of profile, but maybe the eye, the pupil, is just, it's an easier fix. <laughs> and then don't forget, now that is... If you listen to the voice. <laughs> through all of this, there's this energy i would really tighten those those fingers even like the thumb just tighten that and then uh, and then as he goes down you want everything to relax even the fingers can relax the shoulder can come down a bit just the whole feeling of relaxation there uh it's not quite there in those in the detail there same thing here as you go down you might have maybe like the pinky and the ring relax a bit more while the rest holds the mic does he want some changes from a pose change to another pose? Hey, guys. Hey, guys. That works. I like your... Hey, guys. The transition, how you... It, there's a... Cuts across action there. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> you know, same thing almost where... You have a little bit of a... Uh, as he has a little bit of a finger relaxation just a bit like you almost want to to mimic the feeling of wait what's going on as he turns that the fingers open up a tiny bit just watch out for those type of details There's still something where I don't feel like that face quite... And it's up to you. Like, this is a question for you. Do you do you want him to be kind of pretending to sing and then really get into it here? Or is he already full-on singing? Because this is... A, besides, it's very... I can't even draw a straight line there. <laughs> it's very symmetrical. There's no asymmetry in the eyebrow or in the mouth shape, so watch out for that. You know, it's, it's very mirrored. But if you listen to the voice, and I know it's not him singing, but I wonder, do you want it to be kind of relaxed or you want to bring in more energy? Especially this, this all, the energy goes up where you want to go a bit more. But then again, you have those tired eyes, so maybe maybe you don't. It seems like, like this also feels like he's somewhat bored and tired. So that's my other question to you. Like, what what do you want to communicate during that moment? So before I give you all kind of critiques for it, uh, maybe I just want to clarify what you want to do here. Or do you want to go for contrast for like, he's kind of uh, bored, kind of, and then he gets really into it? I don't know, this is my question for you. But don't forget asymmetry in the face. <laughs> it's 
These guys crack me up. This is extremely picky, but as you go down, watch out. That hand is very close to him. If I would just move him globally over there. And if that means extending the arm a bit, that's fine. So there's no tangent there. And I know this is on a transitional frame, but there's something about this just grazing this and potentially adding a bit more of a head turn and eye darts. I mean, I, you could argue you go so fast that they don't have time to look, but I don't, I don't know how much detail you want to put into them. Hey guys, I was just uh. For this section here. Hey guys, I. Hey guys, I was just uh. I was. Watch out! As you go over, we're really also starting to lose the pupil. It's not super crazy, but I would probably stay within. Looking for a frame where we have a bit more. Because again, the, I, the kicker, we're losing this a bit. This is a bit cut off a bit much. I'm trying to find, do you have any frames where it's less? Like we're really cutting this off here. That, this sort of feels better. I wouldn't go too far because, you know, you can totally cheat. We don't know where they are on the, on the screen left side. So make sure the, the eyes are visible. I also would not. Hey guys, I was just... Uh... I don't know, it feels strange to me to stretch your squash and stretch your eyes. There's something about the squash and stretch that I would keep in the in the jaw and opening up and then the cheeks can help you with the squash and stretch. But to me, there's always something where, uh, let's pretend this is my horrible drawn skull here, where I, I, I wouldn't do a squash and stretch in the actual skull, for instance, like in general, unless it's like a super fast, you know, smear frame type of thing. And same thing with eyes, but you know, I can be overruled. It just feels like you want to treat those eyes just without a squash and stretch function. If you look at hey this, guys, I was just, uh... it's barely visible. So you might argue, well, you know, it's just part of that style. And you do have the extreme style here. So why not? Hey guys, I, was just, uh... I just kind of sense it. It's like, hmm, this feels just a bit odd. Because to me, there's also this contrast of you having, you're having that type of detail in here. But if you look at the head, the head movement, if you listen to the audio. It's just, uh, I was just, this never... it just, it's one of those things where there's body movement and then there's jaw and lip sync. But I don't feel how, you know, from the lungs, how he says it coming through out of the mouth, it's just everything. I don't feel the energy in the head, how that matches the voice. Hey guys. I'll... It's, hey, guys, like, guys basically has a jaw down and that's it. Like, there's no movement in the head. There's no arc in the, that you can track through the nose. Hey, guys, I was just. And then same thing here. I was just, you know, it could be just, I was just, where the head goes up a bit and just the head goes down. So to me, again, visually, it's all cool. But then there's this big thing missing in the lip sync where it just feels like the head is doing one thing and then copy paste the lip sync on there and then that's it. Was just... Not minimizing your, your amount of work. I mean, there's definitely... There's definitely a lot better work than before, but I would do, personally, I would do one more pass of what can you do with head accents so that it really feels like the character is saying those words. Hey guys, I was just, uh, I was just. See, this feels better. I was just, this never leaves this room. Even this feels better. This never leaves this room. There's something going on in the body and, and a bit in the head. This never leaves this room. So watch out, you might want to also take out that shadow so we can still see his eyes. You might have to do some fine tuning there. Uh, I was just, I was just, uh, I was, uh, I was just. I'm careful, I'll probably ease into the, when you hit a shape, ease into that a bit more and potentially, not to have to do a crazy arc, but kind of, oh, we shouldn't come back for the muscles to relax. Uh, I, that in real time feels like it's just dialed uh, in. Beep, and then stops, so watch out for that. I was just... Same thing here. But it's good that you have that little movement through there as a moving hold. This never leaves this room. Leaves this room. Phil's room is late. This is something where it's usually tricky with software, where I don't know, the frame-by-frame -frame aspect, and you know, the, is the sync off for me? But just double-check on your end that room, that the M really hits that word. This room. Feels to me like it's late. The room... Just by a frame or two, watch out for that. Hey guys, I was just, uh, 
I was just... Yeah, that's my main reaction is the head. Because then you also have this thing of, this seems like it's on the world or, or uh, orientation or our IK, where I see movement and rotation in Y in the body of the shoulders, right? But then it doesn't really take the head with it in Y. And I know they can be separate, but right now it just feels like they're really separate as in the head is on a different control orientation than the chest. I was just... Uh... Here it almost feels a bit better because the body goes this way and the head goes with it as well a bit. I was just this never really that feels better. And then watch out. Now you have body and head turn at the same time with a sudden translate on that head, where that sudden head move is also mirrored with that sudden drop in the shoulders. So make sure that you don't have too much of a post to post feel to it. You do want to lead. You know, is he so embarrassed that he's going to, that the shoulders are going to slump first and then the head is going to go down? And do you want that head to be more on the under arc with that feeling of being deflated? I mean, you can have an upper arc, but to me, it feels like you just want to get out of that post to pose and look at what leads that action first. It's a bit much. And then watch out spacing wise. I feel like you're activating that translate and then it suddenly stops. It's a bit of a hiccup pause there, just a tad. This never leaves. I know it's fast, but it's just this never. The main thing to me is just how it's a bit too post to pose. This never leaves this room. And then spacing wise, you have that where it feels like we're hitting this the head like that, like it comes down and then back this way. Like you have a nice arc going this way. But then it it does that kind of thing. Hold on. So I don't have a, a sharp point to track here, but if I go by a very messy point here. Yeah, I'm not sure if my dots can really show this, but there's a slight feel of this come back up as opposed to a bit of this. I'm exaggerating, it doesn't have to be this crazy loop here, but just watch out for that since there's such a big nose. This never leaves this room. Never leaves this room. This never leaves this room. This never leaves this room. So then I can go into this never, this never leaves the room. Just a bit. Again, this is very picky because we are very close to the end here. This never leaves this room. Even this feels like you're going down in one axis and then coming back up into the same as opposed to a bit of a, a change there. So to me, it feels like you have some moments where the detail is really, really nice. And then some other areas where I think you should still give it another pass in terms of arcs and spacing, especially on something like this where your the hand suddenly pops over. Hey guys. So to me, it's more little things in here. And this, the main thing to me is that the head doesn't quite feel like it's saying those words, but it's overall much, much better. And it's really coming along. So, I, I mean, you know, I'm just being extra picky because you're paying me to be extra picky too. I don't want to just say it looks great and then leave it. So as always, you can take it or leave it in terms of notes. You can implement whatever you need and, you know, your timetable and your schedule. What do you want to do? Um, but compared to the very first version, this is definitely a huge improvement. So I'm going to leave it at that. And uh, thank you. All right, there's an email, you can sign up, you can start whenever you want, you can submit whenever you want, you get 16 submissions. Either way, a like and subscribe would be awesome. All right, thank you.